Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Detergents and Medical Device Cleaning, What You Need to Know. My name is Ron Hunsucker. I am a clinical education specialist with Healthmark, the Gettigan Company. Some people call me the cowboy of clean. So let's giddy up. So our objectives today, we're going to identify different categories of detergents, review the mechanism of action for detergents, understand the critical process parameters for detergent efficacy, and identify the factors in selecting a detergent for the intended use. So remember, cleaning is a complex and a multi-step process. It always begins at point of use. There are cleaning categories based on the device, be it simple, be it a device requiring innovation or a device requiring ultrasonic cleaning. It all depends on the manufacturer's IFU, y'all. Whichever method we use, we still have to visually inspect it before we pass it on to prep and pack. If it is cannulated, it has to be inspected inside. Make sure you have the proper equipment to do so. Why should we care about detergents and cleaning? Well, first is device complexity. They're becoming harder to clean. There's more steps, so it takes more time. Some IFUs have up to 15 steps. Also, is it stainless steel? Is it insulated? Is it take apart? Okay, then there is number two is the infection risk. There are a lot of multi-drug resistant organisms out there right now, but also patients are living longer, which leaves them more susceptible to diseases and infections. Number three is our resources and our limitations. Time, you know, they all want quick turnaround so they can get those instruments back up in the OR quick. And a lot of times there's not enough room in the SPD for everything that's coming down. Then again, there's staffing shortages. Once people work in decontam for like a week, they don't want to be there anymore because it's hot. Okay, then we have to worry about our processes. Number four is process. Remember cleaning. Cleaning is the process. Cleaning is critical. And when you're worried about cleaning, you have to worry about the detergent efficacy. How well is it actually working? Are we using the correct temperature? That is on the manufacturer's written IFUs. And after the washing, are we actually rinsing so there is no residuals left on the instruments? Sometimes you have to rinse and rinse and rinse just to get the residual of the detergent off. The development of more complex devices and more challenging processing procedures, the FDA has identified device design features that pose a challenge to adequate device processing. Devices with these features are considered high-risk devices for patient infection due to inadequate processing. Some of these high-risk devices are bronchoscopes, ENT scopes, GI scopes, AERs, neurological scopes, robotics, arthroscopic and laparoscopic instruments, Electrical surgical instruments, that means the bipolars and the monopolars. So what systems are in place to ensure the safety and efficacy of medical devices? Well, there are some regulations. Now, device cleaning products are not cleared by the FDA, but device cleaning validation is required for medical device clearance, but only high-risk devices need to include the validation data in the regulatory submission. Device IFUs should only recommend cleaning agents that were used during the validation studies. Validation should use worst case conditions for the cleaning process, the soil, the inoculation sites, and simulated use conditions. And always request data and studies from the manufacturer demonstrating cleaning efficacy and compatibility for the intended use. Let's explore the many different detergents out there. There's a bunch of them but there's only really four categories of detergents. Detergents are known by many different names. The primary categories though are enzymatic, which break up and consume bile burden, pH neutral, which is hard water tolerant and low foaming, acidic, which removes mineral deposits and oxidation on surfaces, and alkaline, which removes organic residue. What is a detergent? Detergents are cleaning agents formulated to remove contaminants from medical devices to the extent necessary for further processing. Formulations contain multiple components, including surfactants. What's a surfactant? 
Surfactant is a surface active agent. Surfactants decrease surface tension, combining to form structures called micellas. They have a hydrophobic water-fearing tail, which group together and surround the soil, and a hydrophilic water-loving head that pulls soils off the surface. There are four types of surfactants. There's non-ionic, anionic, cationic, and amphoteric. Okay, non-ionic surfactants are effective in emulsifying oils and removing organic soils. They may be low or non-foaming. Usually used for like dishwashing. Anionic are effective at lifting dirts and stains off surfaces and suspending in micellas. They may foam and have a limited ability to emulsify oils. You'll find anionic in your toothpaste. Cationic are effective at dissolving fats and may have antimicrobial activity. Used as a cleaning enhancer. In fabric softeners, they are used as anesthetic and finishing agents. Amphoteric are effective using hard water and may have antimicrobial activity, generally have low toxicity, and are compatible with a broad range of other surfactants. You're going to find these in your shampoos and your body washes, stuff like that. What do surfactants do? They increase wetting by lowering the surface tension, causing the liquid to spread over the surface. Hydrophobic gel inserts into the soil and helps to lift soil from the surface and disperse in solution by forming mycelic. Mycelics are typically structures where the hydrophobic tails are inward with the trapped soil while the hydrophilic head is on the outside. This enhances soil removal. Much as you see in the picture, the detergent enters, the tails enter into the soil, and the heads are like a balloon. They kind of lift the soil off of the instrument. This diagram identifies the critical process parameters associated with cleaning efficacy. So, critical process parameters. Time, action, concentration, temperature, and water quality all lead to cleaning efficacy. So, enzymes are proteins that bind substrates, basically the blood and stuff on the instruments, and catalyze reactions that break down materials. There are four primary types of enzymes. There's protease, which breaks down proteins. Lipase, which breaks down lipids, fats, stuff like that. Amylase, which breaks down the carbohydrates. And cellulase, which breaks down the polysaccharides, blood, cells, and organs even. Every enzymatic has different temperature ranges. You have to read the manufacturer's written IFU. There's a low range and there's a high range. You get out of those ranges and the enzymatics are not affected. So to an enzymatic, the substrate is his baby, okay? The enzymatic is going to eat as much of that substrate as it can, but you've got to remember, enzymatics work within a certain temperature, and they get full too, just like people. Temperature is not only important for enzymatic activity, the temperature impacts the effectiveness of soil removal. Blood is a critical soil found on many medical devices following use, so it is worthwhile to spend a little time on the unique properties of blood. Blood denatures at temperatures above 45 degrees centigrade, which is 110 Fahrenheit. When blood denatures, it becomes highly insolvent. Denatured blood bonds strongly to the substrate. Okay, the right temperature for this stage of cleaning process is critical. That's why we monitor temperature. Think of blood. When it starts to dry out, it kind of starts protecting itself, much like an, an egg yolk. Whenever you cook, fry an egg, the yolk is going to be protected by the egg white. So you'll notice the egg white get harder first to protect the yolk. In addition to temperature, water quality is an important factor in cleaning effectiveness. In 2023, the Amy TIR-34 transitioned to a formal standard and is now the ST-108, Water for the Processing of Medical Devices. The table to the right outlines the requirements for your utility water, which is required and used during the cleaning process unless the cleaning chemistry is compatible with the quality of tap water being used. Water hardness is critical as hard water 
typically reduces cleaning effectiveness unless the detergent formulation is specifically designed to be effective in hard water conditions. So utility water should be used for the cleaning stage. Tap water may be used for cleaning if it meets the requirements for utility water and or if its characteristics are compatible with cleaning agents. So again, y'all, we're back to the IFU. Always read the IFU. So detergents are a chemical formulation and therefore they can pose a risk to a user and patient safety. Remember detergent toxicity. Very few manufacturers provide safety data sheets that identify all the chemical compounds in the formulation. Safety and toxicity data provided in the SDS is often vague and not aligned with current standards. Detergent residue can present a direct risk of toxicity and an indirect risk, so it reduces the effic efficacy of the high-level disinfection or sterilization. So a recently published study demonstrated a wide range of cytotoxicity, which can cause cell damage, profiles for marketed cleaning products. It also highlights the importance of, of proper rinsing in the accordance with the manufacturer's IFUs. So when you're selecting a detergent, select a detergent that matches your intended use, whether it is manual or an automated process. Okay, water quality is also an important characteristic. If your facility has hard water, select a detergent that is specifically formulated for use in hard water conditions. Okay, so know what the intended use is. Is it manual? Is it automated? Know the pH and the hardness of your water. What are you cleaning? Are you cleaning blood, mucus, feces? Are there any studies on the detergent that you actually have? Okay. And are you using cleaning verification equipment? What's your process for checking to make sure instruments are clean before they get over to prep and pack? As cleaning is a critical part of the process and upstream of any terminal process, such as high level disinfection or sterilization, the effectiveness of cleaning impacts the safe reuse of any medical device. So cleaning verification standards, ST79, verification of the cleaning process. Visual inspection alone may not be sufficient for assessing the efficacy of the cleaning processes. The use of methods that are able to measure or detect organic residues that are not detectable usually in visual inspection should be considered in facility cleaning policies and procedures. It's in Annex D of the standards, guys. Appropriate testing is based on the type of equipment. Again, see Annex D in the ST79. ST79 goes on to provide further guidance on cleaning verification tests for users, recognizing that there are a number of commercially available methods for rapid detection of organic residues on medical devices. So there's plenty of cleaning verif verification tests for users. They're, they're rapid, they're easy to perform, and they're sensitive. This is in the standards. So it should be done. When you select a cleaning verification tool or reviewing cleaning validation studies from the device or detergent manufacturer, it is important to understand the more recognized indicators for cleaning efficacy, as defined by the ST98, Amy ST98. And the most recognized indicators of cleaning are protein, total organic carbon, carbohydrates, and hemoglobin, blood, and ATP. Protein and hemoglobin are the most commonly selected indicators to evaluate cleaning efficacy. Total organic carbon evaluates the total organic material load from a sample, but does not distinguish what organic component is present. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is an energy molecule found in all living organisms. Regulatory agencies do not accept microbial reduction as an indicator for cleaning. And here's just a chart of the acceptance criteria. The importance of cleaning verification as a tool to ensure cleaning efficacy was highlighted in Amy ST91 that was published in 2021. Cleaning verification tests on high risk scopes shall be evaluated with cleaning verification after each cleaning. Scopes not high risk should be verified using cleaning verification test. You can look at Annex F for statistical frequency determination and consider other factors. I mean, what kind of scope is it? 
Are you text competent? What kind of case was it? Was there a long delay in the processing? So here are some of the conclusions that we made today. One, there's a wide variety of detergents available. Two, all the medical device cleaning is required to be validated. Detergents are not cleared by a regulatory agency. Three, we have limited information on the safety and efficacy and how a detergent will perform in its used environment. Four, detergent action is related to the formulation. Understand its intended use. Is it used for blood? Is it used for grease? Okay. Five, cleaning efficacy of detergents is correlated with the critical process parameters. Tact, time, action, concentration, temperature, water quality. And lastly, monitor detergent and cleaning process efficacy using available cleaning verification tools. They're out there. Look for them. Here are some of the references I used for today's presentation. I thank you for listening. Well, thanks for listening, guys. I hope I was able to give you some information you did not have. Please remember, you are the heart of the hospital. We are the first line of defense in sterile processing. Attending today's program, you will receive one CEU unit for HSPA or CBSPD. Thank you very much.